Just looking at our cover page here, this highlights some of the key programming that we were really proud of this year. Um, so you'll see a thousand books before can oop, the the so the first uh, picture shows one of our readers earning her one thousand books before kindergarten certificate, which is one of the reading incentive programs. Uh, some of the others are five hundred books before middle school, one hundred before high school. And the next is a picture of one of the children's librarians with uh, presenting a story hour, which happens about four days a week. And then you'll see the kickoff to summer reading and a picture from the summer concert series. Some other examples of programming that we were proud of that are not presented on this slide are just being back at full speed in all areas after coming back from COVID, our usage has increased significantly. We've gone fine free. Our meeting rooms have reopened. We've increased book sales by the friends and we have partnered with both, both the East Greenbush Central School District as well as the Rensselaer Elks for some different programs. Next slide, please. So these are some of the key points. Want me to do the next slide thing and not use the mouse? Sure. <laughs> it did practice, but it's fun to use it. <laughs> yes, this is perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So these are just some of the key points in the budget, and we'll speak about I'll speak about them in detail in following slides. We want to continue to maintain our quality services that we're providing. We are prioritizing building repairs, which um, again I'll speak about in detail. At another slide, we want to continue to grow our capital reserves to offset when we do need to make building repairs. And finally, we want to again offset those costs using a construction grant. Next slide, please. That went twice, sorry. Okay, so we are proposing a 2% increase in the levy for from 2023 for a total of 1,915,000, which is under the tax cap. And this increase is applied to both Skodak and East Greenbush. This results in each taxpayer paying two more cents per thousand dollars out of the value of the home. So that would be from 95 cents up to 97 cents. A median value homeowner would pay less than $220 total, which is a $4.37 increase over last year. So that's the only amount that we're asking extra for the cost of a cup of coffee. There is a 1% decrease in the operating budget in order to maintain these minimal changes. And in terms of expenditures, um, we, there has been some staff reconfiguration, which was budgeted for, but positions were unfilled. So we're retaining all staff positions and staff members, but we were able to reconfigure some of what the positions were in order to accommodate changes and save money in that way. Um, this yielded personnel savings, which are going to be applied to technology since this is such a larger expense moving forward. Um, we will increase outside support for technological services. Books and materials will increase by 1% and programming and planning will also increase. We thought this was important for our patrons. We want to be able to continue offering um, the amount of books and materials and programming that we have been in the past and go even further with that. There will be a 3% increase applied across the board to staff, as well as increase in steps where applicable. We want to show that we value our employees because they are the heart of the library. Uh, next slide, please. So here you're going to see our main revenues and expenditures. So this is the bottom line without showing all of the detail and ins and outs, but some of the 
less obvious areas do provide detail. For example, the public funds included in that is the state and county aid, the East Greenbush tax levy, and the contract for service with SCODAC. Um, in terms of account transfers, these are from previous years, gifts and grants, and the HER reserve. Um, the transfers, which are uh, our reserve funds, were budgeted for capital expenditures, and now we're going to be uh, starting to use some of that money. So we want to try and replenish it as best we can for future projects. Our operating expense, expenses include technology and communications, programming and planning, books, materials, facilities, professional services, operations and human resources, as well as staff development. And our personnel, which is a large expense, but an important one, includes our salaries and our benefits. Next slide, please. So looking at this, this outlines the capital projects that we do want to start in, to engage with. So we're very proud to be able to complete the necessary maintenance at no additional cost to taxpayers because of the grants that we'll be requesting, as well as the funds that we've been saving over time for this exact purpose. So this year we conducted a building conditions survey with an outside company and that gave us an outline of some really significant capital projects that will need to be completed over the next five years. So we will spend the capital reserves that we've been building in order to pay for these expenses. And um, an example of a significant expense that came out of that was basically the wrap of the building, like the skin of the building. And there's just no way around it. It's expensive work, but it's also work that's really important and needs to be done. Um, we will also be applying for a construction grant to offset the cost and defray the amount that we'll have to remove from the reserves. Again, trying to be responsible for other projects that may pop up down the road that we don't yet know about. Um, we've already approached the state and county legislatures, including the Senate, Assembly, and Rensselaer County. And this amount is not included in the budget because we have not yet received any confirmation for those funds. We will transfer 105,000 to capital reserves in anticipation of the services recommended by the building conditions survey. And we are proposing an amount of 694,795 in capital funds to be used to support building projects without imposing any additional costs on the taxpayers. Uh, next slide, please. We are seeking one trustee for next year. Um, the requirements are to be an East Greenbush resident and to file nomination petitions with at least 25 signatures by qualified voters in the town no later than five o'clock on August 20th which is a Sunday, so you can use the drive up if you need to. And that election would, again, be for one opening for a five-year term. Um, we would just run a brief statement and photo, and then you could pick up the packet at the circulation desk or print it off the website so that you could be even informed in even more detail. And finally, the vote will be held on Tuesday, September 19th, along with the budget. We'll be voting for the incoming trustee from nine to nine and an absentee ballot is available at the circulation desk or on the website if you submit the application by September 12th. And the last slide, please. I don't have any questions or comments. <laughs> <laughs> You're the public. You're the public. <laughs> You're representing the whole town. All the town. Right. Right. Well, first of all, I want to thank all the trustees for volunteering their time. I was a trustee for 12 years, so I know it's very time consuming. Um, and I promised that myself that I would try to come to every uh, budget presentation because I remember over the years there were very few people. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I missed last year as I think I was out of town. Um, and I would have had a lot to say last year, especially about the fines. I was always opposed to eliminating the fines. I didn't see that there was a reason to eliminate them. I know when I was on the 
on the board at one point, it was $30,000 income from the fines that spun down to only 11,000. But it was the only way that we could get support for people that didn't live in East Greenwich. And we know that about 50% of the people that use this library are not East Greenwich or Skodak residents. So it really puts an extra burden on the taxpayers in our town. And $11,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's half of somebody's salary. It's 11,000 books that has to be sold at the book sale. And that's an entire book sale. And people that have worked at the book sale know how much effort goes into that. So I was really disappointed last year when I found out that you eliminated it. And I guess I want to know why you did that. What was the thinking behind it? I'll speak. Um, uh, a lot of the thinking, there's quite an ample body of evidence that um, fine free really limits access to those most in need. You know, that families get behind, and actually, then they work hard, no longer works, and then the family, and often these are families that most need in service, they lose the service. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Um, that's really probably the main reason. You know, There's another reason. It's, we were pretty much forced into it. Well, because every other library. Because that, we know. were one of the last two or three libraries that were still collecting funds. And you could take your book to any other library and you wouldn't have to pay a yeah. And so there were no fines. So it really sort of made it go away. So we had no Betty, you know, I, I was I know, sure. but eleven thousand dollars is still eleven thousand dollars. It is. And people need to be responsible. I mean if there wasn't fines when I was reading President Grant's book, I probably would have ended up finishing it because you couldn't <laughs> renew it because it was a new book <laughs> and it was just too long to finish in that time period. But you know I've spent most of my life working in an inner city. And we always believe to give people the responsibility for themselves. And people will live up to the responsibilities that you give them. And what percentage of the people in this library, I mean, you should have, is there a percentage that you knew that people couldn't pay the fines and then weren't using the library? I mean, I actually, when I was out getting <laughs> petitions, I had two households where they said that's why they no longer came to the library. Out of my 25 signatures, which was quite surprising to me. And one, you know, it was, I mean, judging from the home, it wasn't financial, it was a sense of anger. <laughs> you know, so it was almost worse because it was a sense that um, they had been disenfranchised in the library because they disagreed with, there was a disagreement with this policy. So, I, you know, we are hoping to have some data, like how it has affected um, renewals, returns, and things of that sort. Be interesting to see. We don't have that, mm -hmm. but actually, you know, we still have fees for certain things, like the library of things, and the computers, and lots, 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 we still have fines. We still have fines for those. Well, and also, if the books are not returned, it, and they're considered right. lost. So they're considered lost when the items are not returned. So things are getting billed a little bit quicker, and cards are getting lost. So before, you could still have service until you get $5 in fines. Mm -hmm. um, now, if things are not returned, you almost have to return your things to be able to get service. So instead of it's sort of across the board, if you don't return things on time, then you can't keep borrowing. But if you return things on time, you can keep borrowing. Um, but you're not going to, you know, if you don't have a guide and you have one card in the household or something happens, you're not getting penalized, you know. But so isn't that more you know, punitive than, than fines? I really think it is. I mean, to, to accrue a fine, to accrue a fine at five cents a day or 10 cents a day is a lot less than all of a sudden 
just cut off, get cut off real quick. And if you don't have the book or don't know where the book is, what do you do? You got to come up with a lot more money and some fun. Well, you do. You still can't do it. You, no matter what, you have to. But it happens quicker. I believe it happens a little quicker. It just means you 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 can't borrow anything until you return it. And no matter what, if you have a lost item, you can borrow anything until you return it. But I do think, I mean, I, I think Michael's correct. I mean, the reality is it was, wasn't really particularly even an option because even as you say, well, it was a way to collect funds from people and other that use our library from other areas. All they had to do is drop it somewhere else. I mean, they're not, we, we weren't charging. Well, they wouldn't drop it here because if they dropped it anywhere else, near where they work, near where their kids are in school. Mm -hmm. near, but we're still bringing in $11,000. And I think that's, that's a significant amount of money. And, you know, from my perspective of working with people that are lower income, that probably allowing them to use the fax free, because when they fax me their applications, some of them are charged 30 to $50 because the applications are so long. And these are people that really can't afford the $30 a dollar a page. Because these applications need a lot of documentation. And I would think that that would be a better way for our library to help people than eliminating the fines. And I don't know if, you know, a person that doesn't have that kind of money can ask the library, can they scan it for them instead of faxing it? I don't know if people know that the library can scan it free. Um, yeah. And I don't know how, you know, you would communicate that to somebody that comes in with an extensive application for, uh, if it's for childcare subsidy or for SNAP or any other benefit. Because um, parents will tell me, you know, a lot of them go to the library to use the facts. Um, not only that's important, but, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a great that's, way to be more theory. equitable and more inclusive. Pardon? That's a great way to be more equitable and more inclusive. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know how to get the word out to people that I work with just ask <laughs> if they can scan it instead of faxing it. And until the parent gets their subsidy, if it's child care or SNAP or any other benefit, they really don't have that kind of. Do we have any privacy issues if they hand their paperwork off to? Well, we, we do have, we handle private information all the time. So that's fine. The only, I mean, we're kind of getting into the weeds now with this, but, but there are privacy issues with email going over email um, with the SHIELD Act and there's all kinds of things like we would want to put social security numbers and there's different things that we can't, we really shouldn't be emailing. But I think you bring up a really great point that it's worth um, exploring how we can I mean, we better serve. I think we've been talking about and it's a dollar a page. No, does it cost the library that does it cost the library? Scanning, you have to scan it to someone's email. You scan so to it. Yeah. Is that individual will be scanning directly to like the higher end. To me, or, or, or to, to you. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Generic. If it costs the library nothing, I mean, why are we charging it all? I, I think we, we had talked about last year saying, okay, let's look at it. Let's look at the data from a full year data cap. Started, we have some baseline data at the end of the year. We're going to pull the data, we're going to compare it, and then said, let's talk about the other, um, the other themes and see, you know, where do we want to go with that. And talking about getting income from other communities, that is still something that, you know, as we've been going through strategic planning, we've been talking about that, and it's not off the table to, you know, consider income. It's 15 cents per side. For 15 black cents. And white. Okay, so that's 50 that's cents per print. color. How much? That's, that's print. printing. How much it is that? Copy slash scan slash fax. Oh, so scanning, 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 scanning is free. Scanning is free. Faxing is a dollar. It's a dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
But I'm this is misimpressed. Oh, no, it's not. It does say setting back across it on the page. But I'm very impressed with the budget that you put together and that you are thinking about, you know, the maintenance of this building. I work with a lot of nonprofits over the years that forget about that piece and then they find themselves in real crisis. So I'm really impressed with all the work that you've done on this budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Gotta buy some more books. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we can stop the public hearing if there's no other Yeah, it's, it's five to seven. So okay, thanks. Small stop. Good night.